Okay. Um, how uh, I was asked the question on, you know, doing the observer or the uh, accessing the silence, and then how do you take that uh, into into your day to day? Well, <clears throat> it's um, well, uh, there's a number of ways of doing it, but I th I think I'll share this thing, which is um, if you're a student committed to enlightenment, or as the Course of Miracles says, the holy instant, um, or oneness then that becomes, uh, uh, I think, if you listen to Hawkins and other enlightened teachers, illumination comes from accessing the inner fields, like the kingdom of heaven is within. Or as St. Francis says, what you're looking for is where you're looking from. So you don't find happiness in external things. Uh, so there is no happiness. True happiness cannot be found in food, sex, uh, money, power, relationships as the Course calls them, they're special relationships because you project that they can fill your empty hole up. So, or food can fill your empty hole up, sugar and donuts, or or a relationship, or people. So nothing from the outside world brings happiness. It's an, It gives you a temporary hit, but it's an illusory thing and there's never enough of it. So the only way to get true and everlasting happiness is to go and access the happiness from within, the higher fields of consciousness within. So with that uh, proviso, um, you can look at it in a number of ways. But um, I think, you know, because most of us are students of A Course in Miracles, uh, I, I point people to one of the first lessons in A Course in Miracles, all my thoughts are meaningless. Not only are my thoughts meaningless, but all the objects in the room are meaningless. Uh, that This body here is meaningless. Those bodies over there are meaningless. The table is meaningless. Every single thought that I'll ever come up in my head is 100% meaningless. There's zero value in identifying with any thought ever. You, know, you don't have to go there. It's like, it's actually, a, uh, it's actually a distraction. Paying attention to thoughts is uh, giving the meaningless meaning, which is actually avoiding connecting to the infinite source within, you know, where true happiness lies. So if I have a thought like I want a donut, or if I have a thought I want a relationship, or I have a thought I want more money, uh, or I have a thought I want to lose weight, you know, whatever it is, all of those thoughts um, are um, an avoidance, a distraction, an addiction to not experiencing true happiness within. So if you take that, so as I've said, so what is it that stops one? I've had uh, 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 near-death spiritual experiences, heavenly, timeless peace, a white light spiritual experience where the world disappears in infinite light and love. So those miraculous, mystical inner experiences of the light of consciousness are revealed when I'm willing not to allow myself to be distracted and give project value onto externals, which are all valueless thoughts, objects, people, places, situations, everything out there is a distraction. So you have to go through the spiritual process of releasing the distractions. Um, to, uh, if you've got an addiction, 12 steps are very good at stopping. You stop the alcohol, the drugs, the sex, the whatever it is. Uh, but uh, it's also on the level of thoughts, which the Course in Miracles tackles. So even let go of your addiction to thinking as a distraction from the inner light. So there's nothing in the world so I'm, I'm answering this question, like, how do you take, if you just sit down in a nice peaceful room and let go of identifying with your thoughts, your body, um, observe your feelings and they disappear, they all dissipate. And there's this beautiful infinite oneness and silence, the inner love, um, the infinite non, infinite non-dual love, the eternal oneness that is irrespective of distraction by uh, a transitory phenomena which are all projections, time, space, this, that, all projections of the ego, of separation. So if you let go of all of that, this inner light, inner peace, inner love starts to reveal itself because one is now not objectifying or worshipping all these trans transitory stuff that comes and goes. So what's the magic then? Uh, actually, it's the wrong word. Well, you have to love the sight. I, I say you have to love the infinite field more than getting allowing yourself to be distracted by the world. You see, the, the ego gets bored. Boredom is something you have to go through withdrawal from. 
you know, the ego says, I don't like, well, you've sat for 10 minutes in silence. Now let's go and have some exciting stimulus from the world. Let's see a film and let's go even walking in the park. Let's uh, let's get some excitement from the squirrels jumping up and down or whatever it is. So uh, so the ego craves some some stimuli um, to um, to start identifying with the world. Um, and and so and so this silence is then lost. The inner love, the oneness, the field of oneness, which one intuits dissolves as the ego becomes activated and starts giving objects and thoughts meaning. So the thing then is ferocious commitment not to get distracted by, when you start walking around the world, um, uh, walking in a park, I'd say do it in your room, uh, feel the infinite silence, then walk in a park on your own. And, and then, you know, all the trees are meaningless, the squirrels are meaningless, the people walking by are meaningless, all your thoughts about the park are meaningless. Eventually, as you render everything in the park absolutely meaningless, then you'll find that the inner silence, the oneness, the eternal instant, the infinite now, whatever you want to call it, the presence, the holy presence, um, is not is not um, distracted by anything that happens in the park. Then um, you do it in more complicated things like uh, talking. When you're talking to somebody, like what they say and what you hear is totally meaningless. Uh, everything that happened was totally meaningless. And therefore, the inner peace um, becomes, then talking is able to happen, walking is able to happen, and that silence, the presence goes, is everywhere, and it's not, um, it's not um, distracted. It's, there's nothing in the ego that will distract and hook into the world, so that one loses uh, that, um, uh, loses the inner presence. So you've got to love the presence. You've got to sort of be clever in seeing how your ego wants stimulus from the world. And as soon as it gets stimulated by the world, then the inner peace is lost because you're now objectifying thoughts uh, or objects of people. So of course, uh, in the in the second that you make something more important in the world, then experiencing the inner inner fields of God consciousness, then it, it is lost. So you have to keep practicing until it's uh, not lost. Um, so that's the holy practice, you know, and eventually the masters, you know, uh, whether they're walking, talking, um, you know, none of that involves the personal self. There is nothing that is identifies and so creates a, du a, dual a duality or a positionality. Um, so, um, is that practical? Is that useful? I think it was. Um, you just got to keep applying. You can just keep applying the Course in Miracles or the Observer with 100% focus while you're in the world. Don't make the world more exciting than retaining the inner presence. Uh, that that would be my my um, my thing on that. So I'm going to press stop.